Nick, it's good to see you. It's been a while. I know, I know. Look at you. You're looking fantastic, and you've always got the biggest coffee mug. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, I, I get up about three thirty, four o'clock in the morning to start work, and so it gets me going. It's you know, funny enough, I I think uh, that in that case, I'm blaming you because I started, I think, this year. In fact, now I look back at it; it probably was around the time after we had our conversation. Uh, I started getting up at around four, somewhere always between four thirty and and six. But uh -huh. the alarm doesn't go; I just get up. And I, yeah. I, I'd have to say though, I'm I'm not I'm not exactly sure that next year is going to be a whole lot better. So, um, but we can yeah, hope, right? That's certainly the concern. You know, as the people that I deal with are anxious to get going. You know, to reboot. We're ready. Let's go. Let's travel. Let's make it happen. And then there's all this. Well, you know, things in the way. I think we have to, yeah, I've heard, you know, people sort of say, oh, it's like being in the war. And my dad gets very upset. He's like, no, it's not like being in the war. You sit at home on your sofa and watch Netflix. There's no one dropping bombs on you. <laughs> it's like, I think, you know, you have to put everything in perspective. Uh, as bad as it all sounds and as bad as it, it, it really is, uh -huh. you know, we've survived worse. I think we can, I think we can get through this. It's going to be bad for a while, but, but, you know, especially, yeah. you know. It will, will for, be for, for what I do, uh, I actually am looking at our biggest year ever when it comes to wow. uh, involvement in money and new relationships that are ready to go. The problem is, you know, what, what's going to be thrown at us? You know, what travel ban, what, you know, what restriction is going gonna, is gonna to come about that all of a sudden it's like, oh, I had, you know, I had X amount of groups signed up to go build houses and now there's a travel ban, you know, again, yeah. you know, yeah. right now I'm, I'm scheduled to leave here in a couple of weeks for uh, Honduras and then on down to Colombia on coffee stuff. And uh, everybody's excited. Everybody's ready to go. Just like hope nothing. <laughs> stuff. Well, tell us, tell us about that because uh, I'm going to guess it's going to be a wild and crazy guess, but I'm guessing no one from the UK is coming over. I'm considering now that we are persona non grata amongst the international community with our latest um, with our latest strain of virus that no one else seems to have because we're unique. But yeah. tell me about tell me about the the groups that you've got lined up. I mean, where do they come from? What yeah, are, they are you from, from the U.S. mostly? They they do, yeah. And uh, here, what's required, for example, to get into Honduras is a negative COVID test within 72 hours of arrival. So that just puts a little kink in the travel is that somehow you gotta get your test done in time. Motivated groups don't have a problem with that. We just built a house last week or the week uh -huh. before down there with a team out of California and it went great. Uh, I was in Honduras about three or four weeks ago. No problem. Again, it was just that test. I had to spend an extra night in Houston get my test done there before getting on a plane because I couldn't get it within the right amount of time from Seattle. Anyway, right. it was just a little logistical thing. Motivated people don't have a problem with that. And when it comes to the whole COVID scenario in Honduras, it's not, I mean, isn't the United States like got the most cases anywhere? <laughs> you know, so it's like, how much worse can it get? You know, so people aren't really being held back for that reason. Right, right. Um, you said you're in Honduras uh, a few weeks ago. I'm guessing that was right after the 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 terrible storms that they had there. Uh, Actually, it, it was just uh, I was there for one hurricane. Yeah, and then the other one was coming and headed right where I was going. So I'm like, nah, I'm gonna get out of plane and fly home. <laughs> so, so I came home, and that one in, that one impacted the coffee area where the first hurricane was more. Uh, it didn't impact them as much. Right. I mean, we, uh, I was looking into it. Um, there was a, a big impact expected on exports because of the infrastructure that was damaged, the roads, the damage to the roads, for example, meant that um, even if farmers had crops that weren't destroyed, they were having difficulty getting them to the ports. Is that right? That's true in certain areas and other areas not. For example, where I where I go in Marcala, which would be uh, La Paz, the state of La Paz, in the state of Limpira, 
they seem to be okay. Uh, but it's it's closer it's, uh, to different areas, Santa Barbara, and certain areas were impacted more by that. Huh, yeah. yeah. And others not. So you've got a group going over there. How big are your groups? Well, uh, usually they're 10, 8 to 12, you know. Uh, and and uh, the groups right now are going into the Bay Islands, which are off the coast. Uh, and then the copy, I've got a copy tour coming up here in a couple of weeks. And uh, of course, we'll be going up into the mountains on the mainland. Yeah. You don't want them to be much more than, than sort of 12 people um, because it becomes like you get a group, like 12 people you can, you can gel and it's fun and, it, and it's, there's that kind of, there's that dynamic that happens in a smaller group. When you start getting 20 or 30, it's, it becomes um, less personal, I think, less of an experience, right? Yeah, exactly. And you're logistically, you know, making decisions and moving people around. And it, be, it becomes, I, I think you just said, less personal. And we have a lot of really close interaction with farm owners and things. And when you say they're talking to, you know, a large group, it's like, that really breaks down fast. Right. The coffee and, around, you know, their their table in their little hacienda uh, with five or six people. That's cool. Yeah. Really? Yeah. You know, it's funny. It's little things like that that you you don't necessarily think about. Um, you don't necessarily think about. It's it's, it's, it's such a. I, I really can't wait to come out sometime, and and it'll be a little one of my little experiences that um, that I'm sure will will leave a real lasting impression on me. Um, yeah. I had a uh, many, many, many years ago, probably, I don't know, 10 years ago, I guess, maybe something like that. I had a, an experience where I was um, visiting, uh, a, 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 I won't say a village, they lived like six houses, right? And mm -hmm. uh, in a mountain yeah, uh, uh, on the border of Greece. And I was up there in the mountain, the border of Greece. And, um, and we were visiting this, this, this guy's mother, actually. And it was in wintertime and there was a lot of snow on the ground. And uh, it's a typical kind of house, which is a one room house. So uh -huh. it, there's, you know, you, you, because it's all around the fire where yeah. the, you cook and it also warms you. And it's like this fire is the central part of everything. The yeah. thing I remember is, it, is as, as night came down, it was like a horror movie because <laughs> as night came down, she said, well, you better go before the wolves come out. <laughs> and we all laughed. And then there was no one else was laughing. <laughs> We're like, oh, you're serious? <laughs> okay, well, we'll see you. We'll be off. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So tell us about your year. I mean, I'm actually blown away. You say it's been it's been a a big year for you. I, I was all, you know, um, ready to hear to hear about it being a very very difficult year with with the situation as it's been. A lot of people have held held back because they're concerned about their um, their their own financial position and their own mm -hmm. there's uncertainty. It's just, there's a clever phrase in there somewhere that I won't get, which says un, which which basically states that uncertainty leads to indecision. Mm -hmm. And because there's so much uncertainty out there at the moment, I, I was imagining a lot of people were just going to sit and say, "Hey, Tom, it's a great idea. Give it a year or two, and and you know, and we'll see then." But it's been good for you this year in in, in some respects. It, it, one of the things that it's uh, it enabled or forced me us to do is to is to innovate, of course, you know, uh, because of the lack of travel and that. And this year, while it was good, I, I'm, I'm really projecting that it's next year that's going to be the big one, um, because of all the pent up desire to be out there again and going for it. But what it what it uh, made us do was with the la limited travel, we switched from building homes using groups to funding homes and having local volunteers and construction workers build the homes. Uh, and, and our tribe, you know, kind of the dwellings tribe, which is thousands of people over, I've been involved for 30 years doing this stuff, um, really responded financially and, and, and for some reason, I know a lot of people that did extremely well financially during COVID. The stock market was fantastic, you know. Yeah. And so a lot of people had money they wanted to give away, and tax time they give it away. They're giving it away again now, which is awesome. Anyway, so it enabled us to switch and and build as many homes as we have in the past, just in a different way, 
And now that we've got that up and running, that that whole thing of building homes by just raising the funds and sending it, and you kind of combine that with the groups that want to return this year, we may do twice the number of homes we've ever done this year, which would be interesting, you know, in a pandemic so situation. So you've basically <laughs> taken your model and you've made it more scalable. Yeah, yeah. And, and like we have these funding pages similar to GoFundMe, that type of thing for each individual build. And we had one bill, uh, 17,000 per house is the cost. Uh, and we have one fund in five days. We have uh, one right now that's funding in about two weeks. We have a 10 house campaign people give to so that their donation is split up 10 ways. That's taken off, you know, so it, people are pretty generous and it's pretty exciting. So, you know, that, that's forced us to just, for me to communicate more, raise money more and people are responding. So that's pretty cool. You know, what, what you were just saying, I suspect, I suspect Tom, that somebody has been reading uh, finance books because you're talking about like fund management principles where you take and you say, okay, you, you don't have to buy the whole thing we'll throw you into a pot like a unit trust and, uh, or a mutual fund, I think they're called in America. And, yeah. and you're basically mutual funding these, these developments, which I think is a great idea because yeah. that way it doesn't preclude anybody, no matter how yeah. much you, know, you want to donate. If it's you know, even a smaller amount, we can throw in X amount of units and it's gonna go into developing this group. Yeah, and, and you, you know, you, your donation of $100 that, in one scenario might fund, help fund one home, and you give it to the 10 home campaign, you're helping 10 families. That's a better feeling than helping one family, you know? So that whole uh, emphasis has really been good for us. Um, and then, yeah. yeah. No, that's, that's fantastic. So uh, you do the tours, you do these coffee. So there's, there's actually, there's two elements to this. There's the coffee tours and then there's the funding. And so the funding is, it doesn't matter about, you know, the time of year or whether the travel or anything else, we can still fund it. And local people are doing the development so that, so that it can still happen. And in mm -hmm. fact, probably people need it more now than, than ever before, because my God, coffee farmers are having a difficult time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, this is the best time of year for Honduras because it's harvest, right? So they just, so mm -hmm. much action, so many cool things to see. Um, we do the tours year round, but they're the most impactful now. And uh, yeah, so that's, and, and that's really, uh, you know, to inspire, educate, uh, and just see the beauty of Honduras, which is amazing, really. Um, and so those trips have, uh, have been, again, impactful in that, uh, people come away from those having seen things that they're now responsible for. You know, there's a difference between seeing a picture or reading an article or, but if you, uh, you know, you meet a poor person who lives in the dirt and they're, they work really hard, you know, really hard, It's not a problem with attitude here, you know, or work ethic. It's just the fact that they'll never make enough money to ever be able to build a home and they will always live in the dirt and they have, generationally right and so uh those are the people that we help we don't just go around building houses for people we're we're looking for people to transition them off the dirt you know onto a cement floor into a house with walls instead of sticks with gaps in them and you know when you go and experience that in addition to all the other really uh cool things we do on the trip that are more high-end maybe or or whatever um uh, you, 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 you can't, you become responsible for what you know. Yeah. And you're personally connected now to somebody that you know is going to get the house, you know? So that's, that's one of the reasons I do it, you know? It's, uh, well, do you know what? It's the best reason for anybody to go out there and do it. Um, I can't say that I've done it uh, because I haven't come out with you yet. And, uh -huh. you know, I, I, we, I have a whole string of excuses. Um, <laughs> 
we call it COVID washing over here, where everything is, is COVID's fault. And all you have sure. to do is say COVID and then people go, oh, oh yeah, sure. Every, everything's excused. Um, but uh, but I, I've been fortunate enough, and I say fortunate enough because it actually is a privilege to give. It's uh, something that you learn uh, when you have children in, 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 in at Christmas time, is that you, yeah. you, it becomes this pivotal point where you realize that you enjoy giving the presents more than you do receiving them. And uh -huh. when you when you hit that pivotal point, then you'll get this conversation we're having because um, uh, I, I've been fortunate enough to to have done some direct uh, charitable stuff uh, before, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be like it's not like anything grandiose or anything like that, but but just something where you get to meet the people mm -hmm. and you get to understand and you get to have a bit of a direct relationship. Um, or you get to see what, what they're, they're doing and, and you understand what difference is going to make. And so when someone, when, 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 if you're ever fortunate enough to be in a position to, to do something like that, uh, I can tell you that uh, from my own personal experience that it will last a lifetime. Mm -hmm. uh, other things don't. Uh, the various cars that you own you probably won't remember much about or think long, you know, have longing, lovely memories about um, mm -hmm. that car that you had 15 years ago, but you will have amazing memories uh, and think back at every time you think back about uh, going mm -hmm. out and, and, and meeting somebody and being involved in something that's going to directly make a material impactful difference in their life, maybe in their family's life. Yeah. You know, that's forever. Yeah. And and it, fun, a fun thing about it with the technology we have now is that even the poorest people kind of are using WhatsApp and, and Facebook and, and various things. Uh, and so your awareness of your gift, it just, it's not like, you know, it happened and I don't know where it went and I, I don't know what's going on. I mean, I literally am on Facebook with, with, with kids that were you know, uh, five years old when we built them a house, they just graduated from college and now they're going back to their poverty stricken island to be a nurse or a doctor. I mean, and you're just how going, wonderful. Ah. And that person was living in the dirt when I met them, and our home changed their life, man. And you get to be, I, you know, I get to be reminded by that by 130 families that I've built or that our organization is built for with these groups and stuff. That's just fun. I mean, you, you see the investment pay yeah. off, right? And yeah. it, it, well, I could do that investment again. You know, we're changing the world here. It's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and and I'm, I'm guessing when you do these trips, by the way, um, it's not just going to be a slog, an unenjoyable uh, uh, sort of, painful time that 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 is going to be paid off in in, in the experience actually going to be awesome with a lot of you know they're going to go to an amazing place and yeah you know now we have hotels restaurants <laughs> along with trying to local you know uh alcoholic drink the link indians make in their home you know you're also gonna go to some you know colonial uh historical hotel and oh just you know it's awesome yeah and at a, yeah. at a price you could not do anywhere else i guarantee it you know, it's, that's fantastic tom yeah, yeah. so so you you sent me a video as well uh and i think what we're going to do is we're going to uh we're going to actually just redesigning the site a little bit but we're going to get that up on the front page uh oh, awesome. somewhere so that we can uh maybe draw some attention yeah uh, you know it's, to... it's 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 just it's trying to it's a 55 second video that tells the story or, you know, it, it says, this is who we are, this is what we do, and you can do it, let's do it together, you know, sort of a deal. And the copy world is has a need that the average person just doesn't know about, like most products that are that, that, that we enjoy, uh, whether that's, you know, coffee, cacao, tomatoes, avocado, whatever. You know, the people that are doing that are among the poorest people in the world. And we just, you know, we don't, we don't go there because we don't see it, right? And yeah. COP has potentially even got a long-term problem that's that's uh, a short-term taking place, which is losing their workers. Uh, again, because of Facebook and everything else, all these Lincoln Indians, for example, in the uh, 
thousands of tens of thousands of farms in Honduras who cultivate, you know, plant, cultivate, and pretty and pick the pick the coffee are getting pictures of their relatives who made a migration to the United States, and they're saying, "Come on up, man, life is good." And these people that are the heart and soul that have the knowledge to grow coffee and to and to produce a good crop are leaving. Why? Yeah. Number one reason, they live like animals. And they want, a, they, want a, they want a decent place to live and a job that pays them more than cents per hour. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so Poppy's got to wake up to this one, man, I'm telling you. And it's, uh, uh, there, there's just so much good that the coffee industry could give, could do more, could do more, right? Yeah. So, you know, I tell you, so um, we could go quite deep onto this one, but I, I, I will say that it is, it's, um, there's, again, there's another word that'll escape me, but it's one of these biases that the human, the human beings have, where when we don't see something, we don't really think it exists. Um, yeah. And, and so because, and I have to say, I don't think it's necessarily in the coffee coffee industries they don't the big the big coffee companies don't necessarily see it as, as in their interests to to um to portray some of the some of the the hardships because too much negativity uh their marketing directors will tell them you can't be too negative you've kind yeah. of got to say what great work that they're doing and every time they buy that cup of coffee you're helping a farmer or yeah. something like that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but the reality is the reality is that we're so far away from from being in a place that that if we had that direct experience and we knew what what these farmers' lives were really like, and you're absolutely right because it's not just in the coffee industry; it's also in a lot of the uh, global industries. and And I, I can I can talk about cacao and, and maybe a little bit about textiles, but I know that if you're a uh, if you're a farmer um if let's say you're a coffee farmer in central america and you know your your earnings your ability to earn your potential to earn is never going to be um under the current circumstances is never going to be enough mm -hmm. that you're going to be able to elevate yourself to a lifestyle that we're not talking about buying the second car right <laughs> you know we're talking about we living or something <laughs> yeah I, I think you put it very well and it's a phrase that i've shamelessly reused in many articles um but I, you you talk about living with dignity mm. that's all we're talking about as human beings uh we shouldn't deprive each other of of, of dignity it's such mm. an important um it's such an important uh, concept or or element yeah to the human psyche, to how we feel about ourselves, our feeling of self-worth. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're talking about mental illness of a lot of people who are in, you know, stuck inside with COVID. You know, you want to talk about mental challenges, talk about some guy who gets up every day and looks at his family and isn't sure whether he can put food on the table. I know a lot of people like that, a lot. Yeah. yeah. But just it's consider that for a minute. It. And yeah, yeah. And so, so the, um, so the, 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 I, I don't know, actually know what the, what the answer is, but I do know that there, that the, there's an alignment between our interests as consumers, which is, I think, what well, I know what you were talking about. It's our interests as consumers and the, and the lives that the coffee farmers live, because if they don't live a dignified life, if they live a life where every day they get up and don't even call it a struggle because that doesn't do it justice. They get up, you know, they get up and, and it's anxiety from the moment you, 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 the, you, you wake up, it's anxiety mm -hmm. and they go out and they meet those challenges and they work their butts off because there is no social security check coming. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no safety blanket. If one of them gets ill, there's, you know, no free medical, um, I know that's that's in every country, but most of the countries that I'm, I'm that I've had experience with, you get ill. That's you know too bad, right? That's it. You go to a witch doctor because that's probably the best you can afford. And that that's seriously been the case in some of the countries I've been to. You, you, the witch doctor comes around, 
-hmm. and, um, and so that's what you're facing. Now, if you're shown on your mobile phone an alternative where y you actually don't wake up in that, you know, you, you can actually break that circle and you can, uh, and you can move into or imagine moving into, you know, a place with a roof over your head and electricity and running water and food, you know, and security. Why mm. wouldn't you? So what's going to happen to us coffee drinkers who want our special origin, you know, single origin speciality coffee from Honduras? It's, it's, it's all going to become corporate and away from the, from the, the family farm. And that's, that's tragic because that's a culture and a way of life and a, a beautiful thing, you know, yeah. and it just will become corporate. And Let me ask you. That has its place too. I'm, but my my challenge has been how do I how do I is is to is to invite the coffee world into let's doing this without making them look bad because it's just it uh, I I don't want to say a negative message. I want to talk about the opportunity to do good and the impact that that will make. And how do we get the, 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 the average coffee drinker to believe that? Because sponsoring a home, one home, let's say, for an individual coffee drinker or a coffee shop literally can raise the money within days and weeks. It's like, what, really? Because of a couple of reasons that I'm too long to talk about now. But, it, but in, and then at another level, someone with a business uh, can can it, it can become a charity that they identify with, and and can I can I I now now I now know that I can build a hundred houses, uh, let's say in Marcala this year, I can scale it and it, it's that easy. I have a system. I'm flying down to meet with a guy in Colombia who's starting a new business. I, it's like a coffee thing that I, I've signed a thing. I can't even talk about it. It's it's going to be huge. Uh, and he's like uh, thousands. Let, we're, I'm talking in the thousands of houses, John. We're, we're going to make this. this That's is fantastic. Be when when yeah. do you think you'll be able to to give us the skinny, as we say over well, here? I might, you know, I could maybe uh, uh, when he gives me. For, he has things he's lined up, press releases, and various. I can't get ahead of him certainly. So it, uh, I, that we'll talk about that when I get down there. But aligning with dwellings is what we're looking into attaching to the press releases and this is the product this is you know the benefits of the product and the social benefits of the product and dwellings we're talking about that coming together that could mean thousands of houses right and um uh, so at a corporate level like it, it's so scalable it's unbelievable and that's easy. wonderful that's wonderful yeah. Let me ask you a question. If um, sort of a, it's a, it's may, I don't know if it's an obvious question or not, but if the coffee workers you're you're out there, if they if their lives were were more stable and mm -hmm. better, right? They so they have a house and mm -hmm. they have um, more security, but there's still this carrot or whatever of mm -hmm. you know of the 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 grass is greener on the other side you know, come to America or go over here. But if you make their lives, how, I guess what I'm asking is how much better do you need to make their lives for yeah. them to, to stay? Yeah, that's an unknown, but, but uh, the, uh, I'm not sure where the tipping point is, but because, you know, these people that are caravanning north are being raped. They're, they're being, there's so many bad things that are happening, right? And they know that, they, they know, and I'm talking to men and women who are making that decision daily right now, like my friends. And I'm saying, yeah, but what about, you know, you're probably going to get raped. And you're, you know, well, I know that. But so where do you hit the tipping point where you're willing to be raped to, to get past a border? And you're going to go to a country where you're not even, you don't know where you're going to live. You don't know what job you're going to get. There's a, a whole thing about the hype of that that is so unrealistic, right? But there's some tipping point. Okay, but when you provide a home, right? It's debt-free. They now have a home. They don't have to pay rent. 
or they don't have to, you know, they, they don't have to spend their money fixing up another home. So you've now freed up money in their economy. That economy, is that enough to keep them there? That freed up money is the stability that you provide with that home. Is that enough to keep them from the tipping point where they're, they're happy with their life, they're comfortable in their life. They have a sense of future. They don't live like an animal. They're now a human. They live like a human lives. Um, we're, we're pushing the poor in these areas to a tipping point that I don't understand as, uh, you know what I mean? I, and I have, I have thousands of friends, people that I know that are facing that decision and they all each have an individual tipping point that says it's worth the pain. It's worth the, taking the chance. It's worth leaving my family. It's worth being raped. It's worth, you know, so I, I, I think, well, a home's a really good start to maybe pushing that tipping point off, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think you're probably right. And look, it all starts with the home. It's the Maslow's hierarchy of need, which is uh, you start with, um, you start with a roof over your head, food, um, water, food, air, water, yeah. shelter. That's it. Gotta have them. That's it. That's the basic fundamentals. Funny enough, I, I saw an article a little while back saying, you don't actually need to move that much higher above the, the base level of security in order to, 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 to live a comfortable and happy life. Um, yeah. It's not like as you move much further up the pyramid. So the, if you massive hierarchy of needs is the basic mm -hmm. of a, a pyramid. And every time the, the, the concept is every time you achieve and you've got one thing, you you want the next thing. Yeah. So it allows you my, to give your attention to the next thing. You pass your attention of the next thing. And it goes all the way from, from having uh, food and security and safety up to self-actualization, you know, yeah. where yeah. clearly obviously I am. And, uh, <laughs> and, but, um, but they've shown that you don't need to be that high up the, the base. You just need to get off that base. So once you've got the security and the, and the um, safety and the roof over your head, that actually you, you're, you're perfectly able to live mm -hmm. a comfortable, happy life. Happiness mm -hmm. is a, one of the very interesting things, but I, um, I, I think what you hit upon earlier where people think, or they have this, this imagination that it's so great. I think that's maybe part of the problem because it's not so great actually mm -hmm. when you, um, when you, when you, when you go over, not for them anyway, uh, yeah. as an immigrant trying to get into the United States. Um, I've, I've, yeah, I, I know stories and maybe I'm sure not as many as you, but I know stories about people who are sorely disappointed with what they discover when they get there. And, you know, some of which wish they could return and are now kind of stuck. Mm -hmm. So um, mm -hmm. if, uh, so I, I guess maybe a combination of giving them what they need on the ground combined with maybe a bit of education as to, is it really what you think? In, in the dynamics, the dynamics are in your favor that they will stay there, in my opinion. For example, uh, apart from corporately grown and produced coffee, the, the many, many, many countries are farm, little farms, family farms, uh, maybe, you know, that kind of a thing. I'm involved pretty closely with a processing plant cooperative called Comsa in Marcala. Well, they, they, they uh, process coffee for over 1,500 farms in the immediate area. What? That's a lot of farms, you know? Well, they, those are built around family, friends, relationships, history. And those people are happy and secure, and they love that life. They love their life. Leaving is a radical departure from the values and what they what they really want right yeah but poverty forces them like starvation forces them to make some of these you provide them a home and you push that tipping point of leaving way off that's the reason that's the that's the number one reason that they go north they say i'm going to go north make money because of everybody's rich in america and I'm going to send that money home and I'm going to build a house. And then I'm going to come back because I love it here. Yeah. What? They get up there. They can't make enough money to survive, let alone send money home. It's, 
<laughs> you know, you must get this. You must get this. You go abroad and people say to you, they either say it directly if they're brash or, or they know you well enough, or you know they're thinking it, which is that, oh, you're from America or you're from France or you're from England or whatever. You must be rich. Not even you must be. You, you, you're rich, right? Well, the, the truth is we are comparatively. In America, we have all these programs that the government's got ways for you. You don't even have to work here. If you want, you want to work the system, you don't have to work. And you'll live at a certain level. You're not going to be, you know, house on a lake where I am, you know, but, but you are going to live, right? And so anyway, we, we literally are. It's weird. I, I don't know if we have time for this, but I think it's important to give perspective. Um, I found out when I lived in Mexico and we had our first maid because they're like a dollar a day or something. You know, back when I was, you know, very cheap. So it's like, and, and living there, you kind of have to have the a maid the way you, anyway, I won't uh, justify, but just saying we did it. And I found out really quick, not knowing the culture, that she's really poor, right? And, and, uh, and I could have gotten 10 other maids less expensive than her, right? Uh, so she's happy she has a job. But when her child gets sick, the, culturally, when you hire someone like that, you're their health insurance your their bank your your culturally and so she comes to me and she goes my son i had to take my son to the hospital yesterday could, could i uh could you fund me money or give me money or lend me money lend me always means eventually you're giving it to him um that to to pay the doctor bill he needs some medicine i need to i need medicine i'm like i mean as an american i, I was like no you know <laughs> like what you know, and then I realized that all the word got out that I was said no, and I was persona persona non grata, you know, among my all my local friends. Like, how could you dare not? I mean, it's culturally what you do, right? Right. right. And so when now, literally, I will get twenty emails today. Tom, I have no money to feed my kids. I'm in whatever country I'm in. Uh, and, and, uh, please, would you, you know, is there anything that you can do? I have been, we, that's a cool thing that we've done this year. Also during the pandemic is our organization turned into a relief organization <laughs> and we sent really? a lot of money, you know, it, a lot of my effort went into raising money to buy food, uh, fantastic. Uh, for people and pay for medicine they couldn't afford. And so we were thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. And so that's that's cool and that's fun. We, I love those people. It's but, a very difficult uh, anyway, thing. They, to... they they know we're rich. We we are rich. You know, we are rich. They just think that they think that if they go there, that they'll also be rich. It's yeah, kind of it's, it's a there's a lot of misunderstanding, um, and so you don't feel so bad. Uh, I had a maid when I was in Indonesia, mm -hmm. and uh, I was given given this maid, or I this maid was was at the house, and. <laughs> okay, um, <laughs> we just see, here's your maid in fact i think we had two maids uh and i was very uncomfortable i was how old was i back then probably 24 25 and um i was very uncomfortable with the process and i didn't use them at all if i wanted a drink i would get up myself walk to the fridge because this is the the you know what my mother had instilled on me was yeah, get up and yeah. do your own things you know sweep the yeah. floor yourself get yourself a drink so I do all that. And eventually somebody had to come and have a word with me. The maids mm -hmm. are very unhappy with you. <laughs> Why are they unhappy yeah. with me? I'm doing, you know, I'm not yeah. asking them for anything. They said, exactly. Yeah. It's their job. You know, you're taking away their job. This is the only job that they have. This That's is right. how they feed their families. Yeah. Every time you get up and you get a drink out the fridge and they're not doing it, they're worried that they're going to get fired the next day. Mm -hmm. I, I, it was really hard for me to understand. And I remember... Either that year was it was it was a similar sort of time. Reebok came under. This is this is a sort of um, well, unfortunately in the West we have good intentions. We can destroy things. We don't understand what we're doing. Uh, Reebok um, came under. They were not lobbied. What's the right word? Uh, people um, protested Pressure. against. Yeah, yeah. thank you. <laughs> protested against the child labor because they found children working in Reebok factories. Yeah. So there was a lot of pushback against uh, Reebok and they said you've got to stop you know da, da, these children blah 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 
and I was in Indonesia at the time, which is where Reebok had their factory. Mm -hmm. And Reebok came over and they just, all the children out. And they said, there, we're, we're all ethical now. But they yeah. didn't help those children. <laughs> they, just, they just took their, their only ability to feed themselves away. Yeah. I, you know, nobody wants to see children working in, in factories. But uh-huh. if, you, if, if there's no social security, yeah. you know, they were living in corrugated iron uh, 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 um, shacks yeah. with no sewage, with no water, with no nothing. And the mm-hmm. only way they put food on the table, that family, was for everybody to go out and try and earn some money. And those lucky enough to work in a Western factory. Yeah. Uh, and I'm sorry how this comes across. I know this comes across bad because we say, well, you're, so Nick, you're saying it's okay for child labor. No, I'm not. But what I am saying is these good intentioned people yeah. took those children away and patted ourselves on the back and said, we've done a great job. Those children, I guess, will have much better lives now. They didn't. Yeah. So yeah. you've got to really understand the culture you're going into. Yes. And I, you know, I'm new to copyright. So I'm, you know, I read about being this and that and they're anti-child labor or whatever. And I go to, but I go to a farm. And there's a single mom with her three kids with her working in the morning, let's say. They love each other. I mean, it just it, it's like, I don't have that bond with my kids. I'm not teaching my kids a work ethic in the same way. I'm not. Uh, and then and in the afternoon, they go to school, right? But what else? Are, you, you, and, and, and I'm like, yeah, but am I supposed to like, uh, like tell on this thing owner? Yeah, how are we supposed to feel about that, right? I'm like, but when, when I'm like, her family unit is stronger than my family unit. Her kids have a stronger work ethic than my kids have. I, this is working for them. And, 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 and in our, my culture, it's, it's, a, it's a mess. So it's, Yeah, you're right. And so I'm like, I, I'm like, now that I'm new to the copy world, am I supposed to narc on this guy or what? You know? Because I think it's really good what's going on right here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I think you, there's we, abuses of that. The, the other side is there's abuses of that. I think there's um, there's this thing apparently that exists called common sense, which yeah. we're not allowed to use anymore. But but if we secretly don't tell anybody and we use it, yeah, <laughs> they have to edit this part out. <laughs> Nothing gets edited person, out, Tom. This. this is raw. <laughs> this is the truth. <laughs> It's true. I, I, I grew up on a farm. I was a farmer. My mom used to wake me up when I was 12 years old uh, during lambing season. Uh-huh. When the lambs came, you know, the di- lambs didn't come at convenient times when all the workers were there. The lambs would, would be born at two o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And my mom would grab me and say, uh, you know, there's a lamb being born. Get your boots on. We've got to go out there because it's been rejected. We're going to have to try to save it and put it in the... I yeah. can tell you, it's very short. It's nothing to do with coffee, but it's the most amazing story. We, we saved this yeah, one lamb from saved this one lamb that was being rejected by its mother, and um, and we had an auger. So I don't know if you know what an auger is, but it's this really big old range cooker, and okay. it's it's fed it's oil fed and it's on all the time, and it provides heating as well as cooking for your house. Okay. So you have basically plates, and you have sections that are, have different heats in them, and there's one section which is your warming plate section, where you put your plates in just to keep them warm whilst you're cooking your food. Anyway, so this lamb was, was, was born. It was rejected by the mother. We tried to keep it alive, uh, but it was very cold. My mother said, put it in the oven. <laughs> so we, we put the lamb on a, on a plate. This was in the morning. So this is now the morning had gone. Had, it, it was like two o'clock in the morning. By the time we had all this done and we were back there, it was like nine or 10 o'clock in the morning. And we, ha- we put the lamb in the oven. So in the heating section, yeah. uh, with a little blank, I don't know, blanket over or something. And... Um, and so we had some friends from London come up for lunch and uh, they came up and they, they dressed in all the expensive gear that you're supposed to have when you go to the countryside, you know, <laughs> the country people are walking around with sort of, you know, Hessian sacks over themselves and yeah. boots with holes in the, you know, holes in the foot and everything else. And the, the, the townies, as we call them, come up from London with a, you know, very expensive pair of wonderful Wellington boots that probably don't work very well and, and all this kind of stuff. Anyway, so they came in. And they're sitting down, we're having a conversation with them, you know, glass of wine, getting ready for lunch. And then my mom said to me, Nick, you better check on the lamb. So uh, I went and I opened up the door and I pulled out the tray and this little animal went, ah! 
oh, wow. <laughs> the look on the faces of the the people who thought that we were cooking this thing alive to feed them for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that um, that kind of how perception. That's a good illustration of the whole how we perceive maybe that issue of of you know kids working with their parents and yeah, there's it's yeah. not always all that bad. It's not. It's not where. You know, where I think that for me, the line becomes like if you go out to, to Cote d'Ivoire, for example, for, for cacao, uh, where they're growing cacao, the, um, in Burkina Faso on the neighboring, neighboring country, they sell their children because they're poor. They sell them for two or three hundred dollars uh, on a, let's say, a two year or three year contract. They'll get paid the two or three hundred dollars. The children get paid nothing. They just get to live and to be fed. And then they work in pretty egregious conditions, um, including things like spraying fertilizer, you know, yeah. uh, which yeah. without protective equipment. Now that's child labor. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Working with your mom on the farm and your kid is character building. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, that, that is a beautiful, uh, I see in the, where I'm going in Honduras, I'm seeing a lot of the beauty of the culture. I'm like, I like this better in certain mm. ways than, mm. than what I have going on. And, and so it's not like every, they want to just go north for the money. They, they hit this tipping point of survival and not winning at survival. And they go, I, I have to go. I have to go. Now there's others that go just for the, uh, what they think is going to be this glorious life and turns into a, can't use certain words in podcasts, you know, it's a mess. <laughs> a cesspool, I think we can say, but um, yeah. yeah, they have a, it's not, it doesn't live up to the, doesn't live up to the, the hype on Facebook as many things don't. Yeah. So, so, yeah. so what's the plan this 2021? What's the plan? Well, it's going to be, uh, <laughs> I'm hoping that I can continue to get my message out and grow uh, relationships, but and convince people that, an individual, a coffee shop, a roaster can easily and to the benefit of their company and the relationships with their friends and clients, build a home, choose a family and build a home for them with us. It literally could take days, maybe weeks, maybe a couple of months to raise the money. It is way easier than you think, way easier. And uh, so that, and then, you know, I now that I'm talking to this guy about his new company potentially taking me on is like, uh oh, am I ready to go live in Colombia for the next two or three years? I mean, I have a life here I really like, you know. <laughs> how am I gonna, you know, how am I gonna, you know, can I be an advisor versus a, a leader, you know, those kinds of things? And so, uh, it's, it's getting, how can I get more people involved? Because the bottom line is I'm in this to get as many homes built for the poor as possible. You know, to me, that's, that's the win, obviously that's the purpose. Yeah. Well, look, let's, let's, let's wrap it up there. We're going to, how can we, uh, so we're going to have the thing on the site and we'll link it to a page, which no doubt you're going to give me. And that page will have more information about everything we talked about, right? Yeah, the our dwellingsnow.com slash coffee. And I'll you'll have that link. I'll send that right after we, we're done talking here. But yeah, go there. Cruise around. Look at the site. You'll get a feel for for, for the different things that can be done. I have one uh, page they can link to that is just like I think it's titled uh, there's a level of involvement for everyone. And so it, it literally lists this is what an individual can do. This is what a you know, a roaster can do. This is what a Starbucks can do, or, you know, whatever. Yeah. And the one thing I would say with, with these programs, um, and tell me if I'm wrong here, and I will edit this out if I'm wrong, but what I believe is it doesn't matter uh, how much you can get involved, whether you're just going to send a small check or, and actually no one's who sends checks anymore, <laughs> whether yeah. it's a small amount of money, you know, or something of a bigger commitment, it, it doesn't matter. I mean, I think some people, me included in the past, have sort of said, yeah, but I can't really make a meaningful commitment. And so, you know, I'll wait until I'm richer and then I'll do something, you know, bigger. But yeah. it, it, it really isn't important, right? 
Well, yeah, some people are living the tyranny of the urgent, you know, rushing from one thing or another, trying to find, you know, get everything they want and meaning and all of that. It's like, look, take on a project for another family. You will, you will re, your life will reshape around something meaningful. A lot of other things will come into perspective and you'll have a new, uh, a new thing that you're excited about. You know, it's, it's, it's a very cool thing to help other people. Wonderful. Hey, Tom, man, it's, um, how long has it been? Has it been a, it's been almost a year? Yeah, just about. And, and, um, it's been something like that anyway. So, like you know, you were the, the first person to come on Bar Talks and, and do an interview. So sure. you've got, um, you've, we should have like a, like a, like a Hollywood star or something. That... <laughs> if, if this Columbia thing comes about, it will be an insane story. And, oh, yeah. Uh, the product, uh, the coffee product is pretty insane. So, you're such a tease. Uh, can I just say that, Tom? You are such a tease. That is very unfair that you come on here and tell me all about that and then not tell me what it You'll is. You'll be the first one I talk to. Right? <laughs> then I can talk about it. <laughs> awesome, my friend. Well, it is morning where you are, evening where I am. So I'm going to sign off and Great wish you here. the very best. Have a wonderful Christmas, sir. You too. God bless. All right.